Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to my video today, or you can call it paint along. I'm so glad you find my uh, video. Uh, my name is Kathy Carden, and um, my website is sunsetpeonies.com. I hope you go over there and check out. I will soon, or I already have. When you, it depends on when you find my video. Um, a lot of video paint along so that um, we can have fun together. I am. Um, I'm trying to uh, do this as if I was teaching, if as if I were teaching one of my two daughters, and maybe one day they'll be interested in doing that. I really enjoy making video. Uh, it's relaxing and uh, I think the best way to learn how to paint better is to paint a lot in watercolor and as you paint you will learn from your mistake you'll learn new technique technique and you experiment experiment with color is all fun okay uh, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint um, a eucalyptus uh, clip art style but instead of um, painting individual elements I'm going to put them together and um, trying to stack them together in a way um, I can make a thank you card out of it. Um, of course, in the real life, when they do, uh, not real life, in uh, when people sell, sell clip art, they don't really uh, stack the individual element uh, together like this. But uh, since we are um, trying to, uh, since we're trying to we're just trying to uh, paint with watercolor. I decided to do so because um, then it's a little bit more fun. Um, then I can do um, two kinds. Today, I, I think I'm planning on just two kinds of, um, of uh, eucalypt eucalyptus and we will see what will happen. Okay, so I actually have a little light pencil mark here that I can follow and it is more uh, convenient or easier for me if I do it this way because uh, painting and talking while you're painting along is uh, sometimes a little bit difficult I felt like I'm using different part of my brain and when I'm focused on the painting part my talking part is not so good <laughs> So I'm going to, um, this will help me a little bit if I have a little pencil line. Okay, so as you can see, we're doing this in a little bit of an arch because that, I think that's more graceful. Okay, and if I have that uh, ready, then I will be, it'll be easier for me to not um, draw a continuous stem. And I have uh, another little one, a uh, different kind of eucalyptus uh, going up here. And I will do that in a second because I want this one that is closer to me to have the darker tone. And if you were just doing it in a computer, um, in, a, in, a, uh, in a software, you can actually uh, decrease the intensity. But since we're doing it in watercolor, I will be the one that is decreasing the intensity for the one at the back. So it's better if we do the one in the uh, we do the one in the front, the eucalyptus in the front, and then we can gauge how light we want to do the one at the back. Last time when I did the apple painting, it took me a long time. <laughs> um, you know, over 15 minutes. But I think having a watercolor painting done in about 15 minutes, 50, 15 min minutes is not really that long of a time. And if some of my video goes too long, and I am sure that you guys can either fast forward if you're comfortable or just stop it and go do something else and come back or speed it up like a time lapse. Those will all be good thing to do. And the green color I'm using is um, uh, Schmincke Perline Green. 
So I decided to show you today because I talk about this. This green color is really nice because it, um, it has less yellow on it, but it's greener than indigo. Indigo has a lot more blue and this has um, a little more green. So that's uh, one of my favorite color, but indigo is also my favorite color and I also use that a lot. And so today we're going to do both. And I hope you guys will enjoy that. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm mainly using this green color and I'm putting it on the eucalyptus uh, leaves that's coming out here. Because um, for this, we're not putting a lot of color, a different color on the leaves, but I wanted to put at least two Because of the purpose, this uh, just kind of clip art style. So it gives us a little bit of a gentle gentleness to it, I think. But here I'm dropping just, if I'm gonna drop some uh, sap green in it, I'll drop just, just slightly. So it won't be too overwhelming to the leaf. Just trying to preserve the gentleness of the color. Okay, I'm using a size 6, I think, of a synthetic brush, but I might, you know, if it is like too big, then I might change it in a little bit. I'm trying it out and see if this is, if this is uh, good enough. So, this leaf of the eucalyptic uh, branch, I'm trying to leave it at the back so that you can see a line that's going through. There is not a mistake, it's just that I intend to do that because right now I will show you one that is one leaf that's uh, actually at the front of the branch. Okay, I lay a soft layer of green and then I We'll darken that part a little bit because usually when a leaf is coming out of a branch it's darker at the part that is closest to the branch this is really fun because it's really quick and it's very easy at least i hope that i can do it quickly <laughs> I actually am quite slow at my painting because I do like to enjoy the process. There's another leaf coming out here, out here, but I'm going to wait for this one to dry before I do that one. And so I'm going on to this one, who's also at the front. Sometimes I, I like to put in a little bit of pigment and then I go in with water to pull out the pigment. And so this variation of tone makes it very pretty. And if I felt like I have too much pigment, sometimes I can just go with a clean brush and just lift it up. I was just doing that as a demonstration. Okay, and this, this leaf at the back, I actually am going to leave a little bit of white space over here. Just so you can, it suggests the vein. Just that little bit of white space over there. It doesn't need to be a lot, lot. It doesn't need to be a lot. Same thing, I'm going in with some clear water just to play with the different tone of the leaves, of this leaf particularly in the front. And I think it looks like this is where it's most logical, where it attached to the wing. So I'll drop a little bit of color down there. I need to use a lighter color. 
I actually, for this leaf, I have a little tag of, of indigo color. Just for the fun of it. And as uh, now I'm going to put a little bit of sap green in the front of this flower. Just to give the leaf some variation. Okay, let's go back to the to this leaf. Now that the I hope the front is dry before I forget to paint it. Sometimes I forget that I have a pencil mark there and I <laughs> I could forget one of the painting. It has happened before. <laughs> Here's another leaf that's coming out at the side. And to make sure that it's more separate this leaf from that leaf, in a minute I will come back with a smaller brush and put a little line there. Okay, let's... It's this leaf in the front. Hmm. too much pigment and because the front leaf is a little bit too wet right now I will wait a little bit before I do this back leaf over there okay let's go back in with a little tiny brush I'm dipping it in indigo and do a little separation So you can see that those are two separate leaves over there and I will come back with some clean brush and clean water to separate the, to soften out the edges. And for this one here also, I'm going in with some indigo and do a little bit of a separation over here. Since this is the branch that's closest to us, so it will be good to have the leaf uh, a little more defined, defined from each other. And since this one is going up, I might want to do a little stem that go up there. Okay, I would like to have uh, to define the leaf over here. Put a little bit of a darker color indigo on it and just push the color out and soft and soften it a little bit. Okay, so since this sh uh, leaf shape is kind of like a heart shape, so I would like the, the leaf to be attached to the stem from here. So I will go in, I guess, with the same brush, a little darker color, and try to just uh, faintly draw that vein and that's enough of a enough of a suggestion that we want the leaf to be turning that way hmm. Okay, that seems to look good. And now that wet leaf, of course, is dry. And so we're gonna go back with some paint and maybe, yeah, and paint this leaf at the back. 
and the same as I do the other one, I wanted to leave a little bit of a white space. Okay, and if you wanted to, also sometimes, you know, with wet, wet in wet technique, you can also at this point when the leaf is still wet, trying to just drop a little color, you can do that too. And that will give the leaf some definition. It's fun. Watercolor is so much fun. And sometimes I would actually go to the white space and the vein and just put a little suggestion right there. And right there to just emphasize the the central vein of the leaf. Okay, so I think like this one, at the, this leaf at the back, it could be a little darker. So I'm just gonna go back in and now that it's dry and just drop some color in here and then soften it a little bit. Maybe just a little tag of sad green. I really, I really like fine brushes. I guess maybe because I really like detail work. But I know sometimes we have to balance that sort of things. Okay, now we have the front uh, branches. I think pretty much done. Let's go to the back one. And as I said earlier, we want the back one to look like it's behind the front. Of course, with the placement of it, it will automatically look like that. But we wanted to um, make sure that the vein and the tone of the vein is a little bit softer than the one in the front, okay? And that will really help us or help the, the viewer or the audience to see that because as thing go further back, we call that aerial perspective. And that's how our eyes see things. So we wanted this to look like it is just so softly coming out the back, okay? And if we, you know, okay, we have that done and it's soft, but you know, we can always come back to the front and give the front uh, branch a little bit more de uh, definition by darkening the color, we can do that too. And that would be pretty. I really like the way the green is so soft. Okay, so let's uh, put some of the the leaves of this. This is a different kind of eucalyptus, I think, and the uh, and the leaf are more like a dollar like a coin, I guess, <laughs> the US dollar. <laughs> I came from Hong Kong, so our dollar is really a coin, but I guess the US dollar is actually a bill. Is that right? Is it a bill? Do we have a dollar bill? Yeah, that's right, US is dollar bill. So I guess that's, <laughs> I shouldn't call it the dollar. Okay, so let's give it a the good placement of all the leaves that we wanted to paint today. Reason why I'm I'm actually drawing this out lightly is because it helped me as I paint. I'm not that into um, paint inside the line kind of people 
when my grandson was here visiting me, he got himself out of the line that I drew for him. I drew, I drew him a fish, uh, uh, and he was very distract, distraught when he was uh, <laughs> when he find out he actually painted it outside the line, and I had to tell him that's okay too. It's not always necessary to paint in the line. I think that's how artists feel anyway about our painting. <laughs> I painted a bird a couple weeks ago and I actually opened up his head and dropped some splash of color. I wonder if people like that. Nobody gave me a comment, so I don't know. <laughs> but as for us artists, we, we really don't mind not painting inside the line. It suggests freedom to us and movement, so it's okay that we don't. We don't. It's very hard, right? Because your piece of art is not moving, but maybe I'll demonstrate it on dead leaves once I am I get painting to it. What I mean by movement. There should be a leaf coming out there. Let's uh, extend him a little bit lower. Isn't it fun when we, if we learn how to draw, we can actually change the direction of the painting as we paint. I really like that. Okay, maybe I will use this one too to put some movement in there. Hey, um, okay, that looks pretty good and I'm quite happy with it. And so now I have to keep in mind, since that's behind, the color has to be very light. Okay, I was using the other one. I think I will, mm, the other brush. I think I'll go back to my favorite oriental Chinese brush. I don't remember what hair they have. It's the happy dot detail. Very gently with very light color, the same green color. I'm going to go in here and drop the color in. And as I felt like I have enough pigment, I'm going to pull it up. So it's not that not that dark and divine and uh, with too much definition definition. We don't want that. We don't want too much definition for the painting that's behind the first branch. So we just keep doing that to each single one. Look, I can leave a lot of white space over there too. What I mean is I didn't finish this part. I didn't have the color go right against the leaf that is in the front branch. I just left it there because I think it's gentle and pretty that way. Okay, um, the same, we just keep going. I love this kind of painting where I can use a lot of water. To finish it up. Okay. Just drop a little bit of a drop of the paint here and there of the pigment, I mean, just a little bit, a little heavy handed, not a problem. We we'll just come back with some clean water and soften it. I 
I wonder if my grandson actually understand that. I say, if you paint outside the line, then there's some movement on the fish. He just kind of look at me and smile. I think he trusts me. <laughs> I love it. Whenever he come visit me, I would love to bring out the paint. I have uh, lots of different palette, so I just let them have a good time with it so they are not afraid of painting, not afraid of color. Not afraid, not afraid of paintbrush, right? And that's very good for them. I don't know if I, you know, care or what they choose to be their profession, if they really will become a professional artist. But I think art is a very relaxing. You keep the other side of the brain, give it a break. We read so many books and do so many. Actually, I think art is mathematic too. But we read so many books and memorize so many things. Sometimes it's just really good to do some painting and give the mind a break. And then we felt more refreshed when we go back to do things. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Just leave a little bit of a white space. Not really a white space because, oh, before I started this painting, I went in and dropped a little... Uh, ever so lightly some background color here I think that's pretty and that make the uh, painting look more soft soft green instead of just um, okay instead of just uh, a plain white sheet of paper in the background okay and for this one I'm going to um, show you guys I hope I can succeed as I'm Doing that, this part I did not paint it because I wanted to suggest that there's some movement, like the leaf is burn, uh, is uh, turning further away from us, and so we don't see this part. Actually, when the light si shine on it, or sometimes we see it and sometimes we don't, as it's moving. So it's kind of fun to sometimes pull out of the line, like if the chance is there, that you can do that. And the chance is there that you don't have to close the form up. That's how why I feel like um, painting inside the line all the time is not really necessary. If I didn't outline these leaves because I, it's harder for me to talk and think about painting at the same painting at the same time. Um, I would do more of this kind of uh, thing. I think it's more artis artistic. Like, see here, I'm trying to do the same thing. I soften the line over there and allow the leaf to... Actually, the color to go outside the leaf. I think it's very, very pretty that way. I hope that's part of uh, what you can take away from this painting that we do not have to paint inside the line just as long as we have suggestion like for this one it's even more if I can call it severe right if I come over here and just give a little more definition to the line so you know that there is a a little leaf there but then it kind of dissolved into the back. I think that's very soft and pretty. Okay, and so for the back eucalyptus, the coin style eucalyptus, that's done, okay? Now, I want to do something different because my daughter got me some paint. Uh, I don't remember, maybe it's for Mother's Day or it's for Christmas time and it has gold color in it. So I'm going to paint some gold leaved uh, gold leaves coming out and it just um will further add uh, movement and softness to the painting 
So the same thing because I am because I am talking <laughs> so much. So I need the little line to help me here. Okay, so I want it to, I want the gold line to come out of here, okay? The gold leaf. Because I think people do that a lot. And then I'm going to go in and do another and another um, vine with very very small leaf that's coming out here just to give the painting a little more movement okay so one right here and the golden one right there I think the golden one is very pretty and I think after that I might come back over here in the bottom I hope you can see how I'm not out of I can't see the camera because it's above my head some very very gentle very very gentle leaf coming out this way very very gentle leaves and just to fill out the background just a little bit actually all i need is just some lines but you know i don't really need to draw out the leaves but I'm going to do it. Okay, so we're going to go on to this so I can show you guys some uh, gold painting. So sorry if I have to um, cross the camera and come over here. I'm going to get the gold painting. There's some really pretty color. I'm using this color right here, this color gold. But I think this copper, I don't know, this is a pink gold. I would call it this copper is also very, very pretty. Maybe I'll put this, uh, um, put the name of this paint palette. It's not very expensive, but it's awfully fun. I have a brother that uh, asked me to paint cards for him to give his friends once in a while, and he loved gold. So he always asked me after a painting, like I painted him a goldfish, and he would say, Can you add some gold on the goldfish? And a goldfish is kind of um, like a uh, vermilion red color. So it turned out to be really nice. Sometimes I don't like his suggestion. <laughs> like if you make me paint, sometimes you ask me to paint him a lantern. And I don't like painting <laughs> lantern after I painted it. <laughs> Whatever painting I did for him, but... I do it for him because I love him and I like to humor him and he usually gets so happy. He really, if I would let him, he would like to design all of my painting for me. One time he actually put a scripture in my Christmas uh, sheep, sheep uh, card and I thought it turned out really good. So he challenged me and made me learn calligraphy. I know Chinese calligraphy, but I'm not too um, good with my uh, my English calligraphy, but I'm learning. And I'll do a little bit at the end of this video to write a thank you over here, just for fun. So my daughter gave me this gold palette and it's very useful. Then I can use it with my brother whenever he asks me to put gold. gold is quite intense if you can see it in person and I hope you can see it in the video okay so now let me get up and look okay um, I'm going to do a little branch little actually little vine 
at the very back just to fill out the color and uh, maybe I put a little bit of a yellow I'll just use the sap green actually and get this vine going okay so just come out of here and it cross into this area over here okay I like the It's, it's really fun. My daughter and I, uh, there was a period we actually, um, I actually I painted individual element and we go into Canva or you can do it in Adobe Photoshop and you can stack this together. I think I'll do another tutorial on um, how to paint individual element and it's really fun. Like if you have, like for example, if this is your element, and you, um, my daughter figure out how you can use a gold foil, a simple gold foil image and combine that together and this will become gold. And that's very, very pretty. But to simplify things today, I, I'm not going into so much of a detail. Need to be done in two separate, or actually three separate, but uh, my daughter video and my daughter, but my daughter is uh, really, really good in Canva. If anyone is interested, I will actually, if you ask me, then I'll actually ask her. Maybe she can do a video for my, um, for my website too. And then you guys can see how, how to put this all together. I guess nowadays in, nowadays in Etsy, there's a lot of people selling clip art. And I guess they have uh, artists doing this these elements for them, or they are artists themselves and they do it themselves. I think it's fun and they sell it for not that much money and people go purchase it. And use it for whatever they need, cards, thank you or whatever. But um, if you're good at uh, with the computer software, it really is a fun process you can do. Uh, actually, people actually use some of these for weddings too. I think it's very pretty. Watercolor is a, a very good um, medium for doing wedding because of the gentleness and softness of the medium. Okay, maybe there's something, a little leaf that go over there. A little bit that go over there and I think, yeah, I think that is enough. And now, let me see if I can find a smaller brush. Okay, it's also a, this is also a number two from Jackson's. And I'm going to come down here at the very back and put some gentle wash of leaf. Okay, so let me make sure that this is in the frame. Yep, it is. Oh. Okay, I hope you. I hope I get this all nice and filmed. <laughs> Everything is in the frame, and if not, just know that I'm trying my best, and I, I just enjoy doing this. But I'm not a professional, not really good. Okay. Okay, I can tell this brush is gonna be too small, so let's go back to my Chinese brush over here. Then I can pick up somewhat of a good amount of of uh, pigment and uh, I can push it out and it can be more art artistic okay what I mean by pushing it out is I can use the you can see that I am directing the um, I'm putting pressure on the brush so that it can um, make the shape of a leaf by itself. By the up and down movement of the brush instead of painting in the line again. Okay, so I need something down here. 
um, to make uh, just gentle leaf to fill that area up a little bit. I think uh, composition wise, it is it is very good if we have something down here to um, balance out the painting. You want it a little more gentle and soft you can just come over here and break let the leaf break through because it doesn't need to be that rigid to be inside the line just let it break through over here and soften the background color okay it looked like I originally wanted a line right there coming down and I'll do that one that one so what we're really doing back here is just make sure that there's like some background leaves and the form and the shape of the leaf does not have to be as rigid and you can use a lot of water and just pull the leaves out That pretty I think that's pretty it gives some uh, gentle you know that looks like I'm putting a lot of pigment on it but I will come back and, and soften that I don't mind putting a lot of pigment sometimes you know but just as long as I have the time just do it before you get dried. You know, come back and use some water and pull out. So the eyes can actually fill out the edge of the leaves and then you can see some leaf shape at the back. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay, gentleness, and I think I will just leave that part alone and I'm going to come over here and maybe make some suggestion of um of the coin shape leaf actually that is ever so slightly you know you can hardly see them but it's suggesting that there are some leaf at the back over there it will make it more. I just used the indigo in the color, indigo color, and it make it look more. Um, if I may call this little bouquet, look more full. I guess it has more color. You can you can use a round shaped leaf or a pointy shaped leaf because those two are present here. Okay, and just one thing before I forget is that since I have a, a soft leaf behind I wanted to make sure the definition of this leaf in the very very front is a little bit stronger so that you can see her don't worry if you feel like you have too much pigment as soon as long as you come back and soften it before it goes dry then you can usually soften it without having a line. I think if you can see this area, oh, I hope that I had this in film. This area is actually quite pretty because uh, I uh, I have softened the leaves over there and make it actually go out of the line over there. If you didn't see it when I, cause I was sitting down here, I couldn't see the camera. But um, there's a leaf over here, and I softened that one a uh, great bunch. So now it looks uh, very, very soft. And um, as I'm looking at the painting, you know, maybe I wanted to, you know, give it a little more definition and let the viewer know that there is a, a, a coin-shaped leaf over there. Not a dollar, it's probably a dime. <laughs> in the American currency okay and that looks very pretty okay the painting is uh, pretty much 
of these leaves are done. And so um, right now what I'm going to do is I will just spend a little bit of time and put the word thank you over here. So it will become, of course, permanently a thank you card. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into and find uh, into my um into my Atessa real brush pen and find some sort of a green color. I hope this green will match, and I will attempt to do some calligraphy. I actually like American style calligraphy too, but um just not as comfortable as the Chinese. I, I, and I can actually come over here and overlap with the with the leaves. I think that's uh, somewhat artistic and I'll try to do my best. Just keep in mind that I I learned calligraphy in, Chi in uh, writing Chinese, but not really with the alphabet. So I'm going to alphabet uh, and I'm going to do my best, okay? And hope that it's not too shabby. We're almost done here. So I wanted to thank everyone for coming to watch and paint along with me. I hope you really enjoy it. And it's a relaxing time for you. And and if you have any comment or suggestion, please uh, leave it at my website and let me know. And I will really appreciate that. Okay, so that's my thank you in calligraphy style. You guys can also tell me what you think about that. Thank you so much. <laughs>